Uh, we're really fully underway now. All the testing sites, with the exception of LAD, you know, those that are right now, all the testing sites, with the exception of LAD, you know, those that are, have been stood up there, manned and testing. Uh, and you'll hear a few more remarks about LAD Stadium in just a few moments. I think you know this, but uh, the data that is being gathered from these tests will help drive our decisions on what the city should do as we address actions that should be taken, having to do with uh, enforcing social distancing and any other tool we may have in our toolbox to make sure that we contain the virus. And actually the order of the day or the idea of the day is social distancing. And for many that means if you have the ability to stay at home, we need you to stay at home. Um, every day I will continue to say that our first and foremost responsibility and focus is on your health and safety and everything that we're doing is pointed toward that. Today we have the 43 confirmed cases uh, and one death uh, attributable to the coronavirus in Mobile County. We are prepared for that number to increase. It's going to increase because the virus was spread before we started testing, but as the testing ramps up, you will see more positive, uh, more positive results. To stop the coronavirus, social distancing has as much to do with it as anything. Washing your hands, I've actually seen that washing your hands for 20 seconds and getting a lot of lather on them. I don't know where the source of that is, but do wash your hands and do not touch your face. Uh, those are the things that, uh, that we're all being told. You see it on TV time and time again, and we will continue to say that also. Just got off the uh, string of text with Synergy Labs. The new equipment that they had purchased that we've been talking about for 10 days, the, uh, the sales representative from Thermal Fisher was in today. The equipment is running. And so it will come on stream exactly as planned. By the end of this week, there'll be running tests. By next week, sometime next week, we'll be in full production. And at that point, I would believe that we will be able to test all the people that need to be, te that need to be tested uh, in Mobile County should be, there should be test kits available and the lab availability for quick turnaround. Infirmary Health, both of their sites, the one at 1700 Springhill Avenue is up and running, as is the Hillcrest site. And it started at eight o'clock this morning. I was out there and saw the cars uh, driving through. And there's a phone number that you can call for, the, uh, for either of those locations. Even if you're not a patient of the infirmary health system, that number is 435-1106, 435-1106. And at that point, you will be given an appointment for you to go to one of the testing centers. At this time, I'd like to call on Dr. Michael Chang, who is the Chief Medical Officer at uh, University Hospital, for him to give you an update on LAD and anything else that he may have that he wants to share with you. So, Dr. Chang. Hello, so um, on behalf of USA Health, We'd like to thank the, uh, Mayor Stimson and the City of Mobile for partnering with us on setting up an ambulatory testing site, which will be at Ladd Stadium. We anticipate that we'll uh, start opening up, to be able to open up testing to the public on Monday of next week. And uh, this will be an opportunity for both patients from within the USA Health System and the general public who are concerned that they may have been exposed or infected to, to uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, to um, uh, see if they qualify for testing. That would involve calling a phone number, much as you heard Mayor Stimson just described for Infirmary Health, calling a phone number, a centralized phone number for USA Health and um, going through a series of screening questions to see if, if, if that person, if, if you would qualify for testing. And if so, you'll be given an appointment and a t uh, time to come to Lad Health to uh, be tested while you're in your car. So we think this is really important for um, um, the citizens of Mobile County and the city of Mobile because, because really the way, to get a, the way for us to understand what we believe the impact of coronavirus 
might or will be on our community and on our health care systems is for us to have a, a, as accurate as an idea as possible as to what the burden of disease is, both in terms of those tested, but most importantly, in terms of the number of positives that we have. So this is going to be an important next move for all the health care systems in the city, and we're very glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chang. At this time, we have Dr. Laura Cepeda. She is the medical director for the Mobile County Health Department. Dr. Cepeda. Thank you so much for having me, Mayor Simpson. Um, and I just. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just want to thank everybody for everything that you're doing to um, help spread to help stop the spread of this virus and just give some updates. Um, there are currently all the uh, hospitals in the county are at less than 50% capacity, which is great news and doing things like canceling elective surgeries um, have been able, have helped us be able to keep this number low so that we're able to um, take in any patients that we need to um, with the coronavirus. Um, also um, regarding the ventilators, all of our capacity is holding steady as well, and we're at less than 50% capacity as well on those. Um, again, thank you everyone who is uh, doing their social distancing. I know it's hard to keep doing nothing, um, and it feels like you're doing nothing, but that's exactly what we need to do right now to, to protect yourselves and to help protect everyone at a time like this. So keep up the great work and thanks everyone for working together to help stop this. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to repeat what, uh, what Dr. Cepeda said and that was, and there's been a question in the media, but collectively, if you look at all of our hospitals, the comment was we're at less than 50% capacity in the beds as it's being tracked with a statewide system, um, in a, within a statewide system, and the ventilators are at, uh, slightly less or at 50% capacity. That doesn't mean that everybody on a ventilator is COVID positive. Some of them could be on ventilators for a host of other reasons, a host of other health reasons. So anyway, that's something I think that a lot of people wanted to know, were we going to run out of capacity? Well, it's very difficult to predict that, but I'll say that all the moves that are being made within the hospitals to free up beds, uh, I feel comfortable at this time saying that in the near term future that we are and we should be in good shape. You heard the governor's order last week about the uh, regarding non-essential businesses. They all closed Saturday, I believe it was at five o'clock. Our experience this past weekend though showed us that even with a lot of the non-essential businesses being closed, that the essential businesses were having a difficult time controlling the number of people that were inside their stores. Having observed that, uh, within the next day, or 48 hours, we will be coming out with a directive to those businesses that are remaining open to help them set a limit on how many people will be allowed inside their store at any given time. And I'll give you an example, and it's already occurring in some places. You know, if, if you have a capacity inside your store of 100 people and you have 100 come in, nobody else comes in, you know, maybe until 10 leave and 10 more come in. But that way you're going to, it's easier for the store personnel to assure that, the, that you have the required social distancing instead of us just shooting from the hip mandating that happen we will work to determine what store has what capacity so that they can continue operating but with uh, safety precautions in mind also uh, the order from the governor said there's not to be more than 10 people gathered uh, for other gatherings we it's been brought to our attention that there are social gatherings at different places that may have 25 or 30 people. Should our policemen come upon you, they will ask you to disperse. If you don't disperse, we will uh, have 
something else that we will come back in the future uh, to encourage you or to make sure that you do disperse. But again, I think everybody is starting to get the message. We don't want a lot of people gathering, more than 10. And so please help us with that. And if you observe that that's not going on in your neighborhood, if you're uncomfortable, call on them out, let us know, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. As you know, the White House has extended the, the social distancing guidelines to April 30th. What we intend to do is that we are uh, following presidential orders, we're following the governor's orders, and then we are creating our own, depending on the circumstances that we see occurring here in the city of Mobile. Our city operations will continue uh, as they well, as they have most recently as of the end of the week, we're continuing to find out how many more people we can have teleworking from home and what things that we can do to make sure that within City Hall that we can continue to operate without having too many people in the same place. This past, uh, last night at 6 o'clock, uh, there was an event at all the hospitals it was in the parking lots. It was called Light It Up Mobile. It was that brainchild of, I think, one lady and maybe a small group in her Bible study. And the idea was, was to, at 7 o'clock, show up in the parking lot at one of the hospitals, turn on your flashers, tune in to 92.5, where there was praise music and prayer. I think it was amazing the number of people that turned out. We could see people in the windows of the hospital, up on the roof of the hospital, at the top of the parking deck, you know, waving, and it was certainly an appreciation because the idea was that we were praying for not only those patients in there, but we were also really praying for the health care providers. And as they were leaving at the end of their shift change, uh, the waves and the honking of horns, it was tremendous to see the, uh, how, how they received it. And it was certainly received with the intent that it was meant, meant, and that was we genuinely appreciate what they're all doing. The group that started this, the small group of, of ladies, they would like to continue this as long as there is expressed interest in the community for those that want to show up in the parking lots and you actually show up and you ask to stay inside the car, you know, to be safe. But anyway, it was uh, very gratifying to see that happen. Um, I will ask uh, Commissioner Carl, do you have anything that you'd like to add? You, you good? You good? Thank you. Yep. Real, real, real briefly, I want to assure you that the county's working on, on as many aspects of this as we possibly can. We're desperate, like everyone else. We feel like there's not uh, a lot of things that we can do. Uh, but we should be doing and we just can't figure out what the should be part is. I, I think we all feel that way. But rest assured the county, the city and the state are working hand in hand trying to get some of this together and I assure you, if you want to beat this, stay at home. Control your contact with other people. Uh, light the phones up calling and chit chat. My wife has got, uh, for example, her bunco group of ladies, the 12 of those get on a chit chat at night. So it's turned into a social event for them. I encourage you to do that, but let's let's really focus on not having contact, physical contact with other people, and we will beat this thing. We will get it under control, and we'll come out much stronger and wiser from it. So thank you. So there's one other person I would ask to please come make a few remarks, and that's Chandra Brown. Chandra works with Lifeline Counseling. As you can imagine, there are a lot of people who, even without the coronavirus pandemic you know that needed counseling the prediction is there will be many more especially as you're isolated at home so at this time i would ask chandra brown to make a few remarks one of the programs that we have in collaboration with united way of southwest alabama is 211 
So just like you would have 911 for emergency services or 311 for city services, we also offer 211, and that's for health and human services. And so that can give you a capacity to call if you have any concerns about where do you go in your community to get food, how can you pay your utility assistance, or any of those concerns that can connect you to the resources. And we cover over eight counties in Southwest Alabama. So all you would have to do is call 211. We also recognize that right now it is a really emotionally taxing time for every single one of us. And so if there are any moments or any points in time where you just need to talk, you just need to let out some stress. We know it could be stressful having kids at home. We know it could be stressful not knowing what to do about work or what are the next steps in our lives because we're in an unprecedented time right now. So feel free to call us. We're here uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week available for you to to listen to you and to be there. Um, you can also call our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255. Thank you. This is Samantha Clement, right? Okay. So last, I think it was Friday, that Samantha Clement joined us. Uh, for those who are hearing audio impaired or hearing impaired, apologize for that. But thank you so much for being here, uh, Samantha. So at this time, I'll be glad to answer your questions. And if I can't, or if you would like to ask one of the doctors or Chandra, uh, they'll be available too. So, Mr. Simpson, uh, yes. most big cities in the state have imposed a curfew, Montgomery, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, uh, Gadsden. Uh, and then Florida has checkpoints along the state line for people coming from hot spots. Do you think you guys are doing enough to be able to stop this spread? So as we continue to look at the data, we're trying to make sure that we're not just doing things because somebody else is doing them. Uh, we have in our toolkit, uh, we have an order that we could pull out and say that we will have a curfew. We have, we're working on the process now to make sure that within the stores that uh, there will be social distancing about depending on the number of people that we will allow in the store. But at this point in time, we're not ready to issue an order for a curfew. So the social distancing in the store, those guidelines you guys are going to be putting into place, that will go into effect for like grocery stores, things like that? Yes. Do you think that will cause more panic, though, because people having to wait outside in long lines before they can get in, or do you think that whatever undo stress or concern it causes is going to be more I, I, I don't. I don't want to predict which one's going to cause more angst. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how to predict that. But if, if what we're standing behind this podium every day saying social distancing is important, everybody should be getting the message that we're going to try to get that one way or the other. Pardon? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Good. Uh, I know you guys said that the number of hospital beds and the number of people on ventilators 50% or 50% or lower for hospitals. Do you know the hospital? What is the capacity in the hospital? So the question is, do I know what the capacity is in the, um, I'm going to say the Mobile County Hospitals, because we made the remark that uh, they're at 50% capacity ventilator and bed-wise. I do not know. It's known. I just don't know how to, I cannot answer your question because I don't know that number on the capacity. The number of unemployment rate, do you have that for Mobile? I do not have the unemployment rate for the city of Mobile right now. Do you know if it's gotten higher? I can assure you it's gotten higher. I just don't know the right number, the, the exact number. And you, know, you said that uh, you, Monday you guys are looking to open up the testing side of the lab. Is that just the lab or are you guys doing the grounds as well? I'm sorry, could you hear the last part of that? Lab. Is that going to be the grounds as well? I know they had sent up a site there. It could just be the one at lab. I'm, not, I don't, just I'm sorry, the qu just lab. Just lab. I, yeah, the question okay. was, okay. And you said next Monday will be opening? Uh, that's what we anticipate, yes. Is that waiting for supplies to come into place? Uh, you guys are just trying to make sure you guys have enough so you don't So have to there's a. It takes a lot of work to set up a testing site. You have to figure out how you're going to route traffic. You have to put tents up in case the weather's bad. You have to sort through how you're going to, which electronic health care record you're going to use and how you're going to use it. How you have to create an order in it. You have to figure out a way to get these swabs. Once you get the swabs, you have to train folks to actually perform the test. Once you have the, those folks trained, then you have to find a way to make sure that the, the, those swabs get to the correct testing lab and so on and so forth. 
So to, to, to do something like this is, is um, a, quite a logistical challenge. Um, I think by the, by the end of this week or early next week would be when we could safely say we'll have all that taken care of, working in concert with the city to, to do just, just the things that I described and even more. Will it be USA staff doing all of this? Will will yeah, the question is will it be USA staff manning the testing site? Yes. So the question is, what's the turnaround time going to be on testing? It depends on the test, and it depends on the company doing the test, and it depends on the demand or the number of tests performed. We think that we'll be able to do up to 250 tests per day at this site, uh, and depending on you know the company that is that is used for the testing, I believe it's going to be Synergy from here in Mobile, and what the demand on their resources is from other test sites that they may, that they may be helping with. Uh, the, the turnaround could, any, could be anywhere from 24 hours to 48 hours or longer. I just don't know. It's impossible to say because I don't know what the demand's going to be on their, their resources. So, I mean, you and the firm are the bigger hospitals in the area, with you guys being able to do 250 probably a day, roughly, starting next week, and them doing their drive through testing. You, within a few weeks, we'll probably get a clear picture of what it's like in our area with the number of people affected. Right, so the question was, um, how long would it take for us to have a pretty good idea of what the disease burden is in Mobile County? And I, th I think the answer, I think you answered it yourself. I think, I think within a few weeks we'll have a lot better picture uh, of what the disease burden will be than what we know right now. That's exactly right. A lot of tests are being, are negative, coming back negative for coronavirus. Uh, I mean, is that because flu is also going around? Is there a lot of other stuff going around at this time currently where it's kind of, can be a little similar. So the, so the question is, what's driving the high negative rate for testing in this area? Uh, I think it's all the things you described. I think it's, it could be flu, it could be other um, upper respiratory tract viruses that are not the novel coronavirus. It could also be allergies um, or, and some combination of those things. You don't have to be, how do I put this? You can be infected with, you can have more than one of those conditions at one time. So, for example, if you test for the flu and for coronavirus, it's possible you could have one or both or neither. So you need to be tested for all of them if you meet the criteria. As I said last time we were here, the, we're, we are, we are uh, using uh, screening questions to limit the number of coronavirus tests we have because if, you, if we don't want to have too high a false negative rate, burn too much PPE uh, on performing negative um, coronavirus tests. And how is the PPE doing for you guys at USA Health? Are you guys running out of certain supplies? I know masks are still an issue for hospitals across the country. Uh, the, the face shields, the gowns, are you guys doing well there? Are you guys having to reduce things? How is that working for you guys? So the question was, how are we doing with PPE at USA Health? Right now we're doing okay. The, the, the patient load is pretty low right now. Uh, so we're doing okay with all the different components of PPE that you've described. And we have a um, PPE governance group that looks at our PPE supplies, the opportunities to get supplies from industry, from donations, prefabricated and so on, that's sort of working that, working that variable on a daily basis. Any, any other questions? Thank you very much for being here. Social distancing, stay home. All right, we were just listening to Mayor Sandy Stimson and a few leaders from across the Gulf Coast. Now, we did receive a lot of new information. First and foremost, the mayor did say a new directive or order for those essential businesses that are still open should be coming through in the next few days. He says essential businesses have been overwhelmed and there will be a set number of people that can come in or out of that store and location. Again, he said we'll learn more about that within the next few days. Also, medical director for Mobile County Health Department said, 
Hospital capacity and ventilator capacity is under 50% for the city of Mobile, and not all of those folks are positive for COVID-19. Synergy Labs, they're running tests at the end of this week, and they should be in full capacity and production for next week. Also, the Ladd Stadium testing site should be running Monday of next week, and um, Mayor Sandy Simpson did say that he's not quite ready to issue an order for a curfew. He did use the term that is just a tool in the toolbox, but he's not quite ready for that. You'll want to stay tuned to Fox 10 News at 4 p.m. We're going to break down all these new details for you. We'll see you in about 30 minutes.